Spectrum slide 10 says that erythromycin is a narrow spectrum. Uh, you can erase that one. Um, I'd rather depend on dose 2. Right? Yeah. 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 You see, erase slide 10. Right. Basically, you see regular doses, low to moderate dose, this is bacterial static, high dose, and natural final. So it's broad. Can you hear over here what you were talking about? Uh, is it on, on slide 10 that uh, erythromycin came under narrow spectrum? It's actually a broad spectrum. Okay. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a trade off. Okay. Use moderate to severe effects with the respiratory or GI tract, soft tissues. Treating of mycoplasmal pneumonia which we'll be talking about a little bit later. It was uh, found to effectively treat Legionnaire's disease. He got his name because the disease surfaced during a Legionnaire's conference in Washington, D.C. <laughs> For real? For real. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I hope going to be called the congressional disease, but he didn't kill any other guys off. <laughs> So we went on to Legionnaires. Politicians must have a very funny <laughs> uh, Side effects, you can see. Uh, we have tinnitus. Autotoxicity basically means it, that can cause deafness. You have G, GI distress, super infection like with any other medication. And you have to toxicity. Me, which means that it, it is metabolized where? In the liver. Okay, examples that we have are as you can see. These are all forms of, of uh, your uh, macrolid falling under erythromycin. Drug interac interaction the level of warfarin, the and Carbamazepine. <laughs> I had trouble with those like everybody else. Okay, the increase. Warfarin is used as a, as a uh, anticoagulant, or as you would call a blood thinner. The uh, op is used for um, open your airway as a uh, bronchodilator. And you can tell me what carbamazepine is used for. Seizures. Seizures, exactly. Okay. So if the antibiotic is given while the person has taken these, they can increase these medications and cause uh, side effects or uh, adverse side effects or even toxicity. Um, and then erythromycin levels increase with these medications.
Uh, nursing intervention that you see there. Uh, basically, you want to give them what there, when there is, is nothing in the stomach. Minor issue is if you give it with the food, it can cause gastric distress, but that's minor. In most cases, the medication becomes pretty become ineffective and give it then as it goes through. Mm -hmm. And you can see that as well as I can. You can give us both synthesis. Side effects, as you can see, are pretty much similar to any other antibiotics. I'm talking colitis, anaphylactic shock, those we're talking more of an adverse reaction rather than side effects. Side effects are things that you may or may not expect to see, but they, they may happen. Uh, adverse reactions should never happen. Kaolin and pectin decrease. Uh, myosin, and then the other uh, increase that we'll be talking about both those medications here shortly or in another day. Vancomycin. Use for serious infections. Uh, the, reason, the reason being is vancomycin is very caustic to the body. Uh, for example, when you give it IV, by your third dose, if you have a peripheral IV, you have to use your IV. It eats away at the vein. It's a very potent uh, medication. But it's very effective. Very effective when, when uh, introduced with other cosmic I can't just talk about Side effect, as we can see, Red neck or red man syndrome, it actually it means what it says, because it causes that kind of a hue on the skin. It occurs when the IV is too rapid, so you slow it down and it goes away. Uh, it can cause severe hypotension and then flushing. Autotoxicity auto again and then so forth. What is Stevens Johnson syndrome? Who knows? Good. When the skin sloughs off, it usually starts off at the palms or, or the, the palms of the hands or the, or the balls of the feet, and then it starts, uh, and then others around, around the mouth, around the nose, and then uh, it sloughs off. Stop the medication, it stops eventually. Slip. Blood dysgrasia is that it destroys the components of blood, like white blood cells, red blood cells, platelets. It destroys those components in the blood. Now is it killing off bacteria? And it's pretty nasty. It's pretty nasty. And that's why it's only used in severe infections rather than, okay, I got a cold, let's give you vancomycin. If you got an infection that cannot be controlled in any other way or, or a very severe infection, then that's the drug of choice. Otherwise, it is, uh, in some circle, it is considered, considered the last resort. The monitor levels, so we talked about peak and trough before. We do peaks and trough on, on medications like, like vancomycin. We make sure that we're staying within a therapeutic dose. We don't want to become toxic and then all those adverse reactions show up. And then the, the, the other nursing considerations that we have 
or administer over one to two hours, rotate site. When I said rotate sites, that means IV sites. Rotate IV sites. Generally, by the by the third dose, the IV is shot, and it's time to go to a different different site. Mm. If a patient is going to be on this for a long period of time, that they'll either put in a pick line, or it is an IV line that comes in peripheral and it comes up into the, the superior vena cava going right to the heart, or they do a central line which comes under the subclavian and then goes into the heart. Is it a harsh, a harsh type medicine? That's why you have to keep rotating. It's a very harsh medicine. Oh, okay. That's very good. Keto lines. Related to the macrolides that we talked about earlier, blocking bronchial synthesis, chronic bronchitis, sinusitis, and community acquired pneumonia. And that is the pneumonia that you catch when you're out in the mall. Uh, years ago, they used to call that walking pneumonia, where it's something that you you. Uh, Acquired as you were outside. Spikes gram negative or positive in this broad spectrum. Spikes um, hilly uh, H bacteria. <laughs> or uh, H pylori. It's a bacteria normally found in your stomach. Uh, this, is, is a, this is a common treatment for acne. And when you have uh, a bacterial resistant uh, problem that they, they will bring in this medication. It can be given as shown. Um, because of issues like discoloration of permanent teeth, they'll give it to children under the eight, that they will not have permanently yellow teeth. Again, we have our blood dyscrasia and so forth. Now, one thing on the on this slide, these are our different kinds of tetracyclines that uh, short acting, long acting, long acting. This right here may be taken with milk or food. Generally, tetracycline is to be taken without food or milk. It's supposed to be taken on an empty stomach. Okay. In your book, it says take on an empty stomach. However, because sometimes the medication is poorly tolerated. When taken with food, the patient tolerates it well, and then it's still effective enough of an antibody. So it's only for that long-acting medicine you take. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Okay. But it gets. But you'll see in your book it says, "Do not take with food," and this is a, it, one of those those uh, paradoxical things where, because of the stomach issues it can cause, take it with food in order to prevent upset stomach. Generally, none of them should be taken with food. It says in the book right here for the long acting one should take with food. Right. Right with long acting. It's uh, uh, generally these are not taken with food. However, the, uh, because it, it decreases their effectiveness. Like I said, there's a misnomer is that with te tetracycline, you can take it with milk in order to decrease the, the gastric distress. It's not a normal uh, happening, so you, you don't take it with every dose, but if you can. Is that confusing yeah. enough? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. generally, generally remember that tetracycline cannot, cannot be taken with any kind of food except for long -handed. Remember that. When we get into real life scenarios, then we'll, we'll cover some of the other things that, that will come into play. How's that? Okay. 
Cyclin will decrease the effects of oral contraceptives. So if you're being treated for acne, you should not be promiscuous. <laughs> and then the bottom one, the jock, which we'll be talking about later, the heart medication, the absorption is increased with this medication. All those things have to be kept in play because of what it can happen in the first place. How it affects the body. <laughs> Nursing interventions go pretty much like everything else. Uh, one difference is, is that this uh, can cause uh, a uh, sensitivity to, to sunlight, therefore, sunblock, hats, long sleeves, and whatever else need to be worn with this medication to prevent uh, severe sunburn. And use effect for oral hygiene because this will color your teeth. Okay, so you were saying like if it is toxic, <laughs> if it is then that's where it's metabolized. Can you say that something like that earlier but it was a no, we were talking about something else before. Is it so just because it's toxic to that, well, I guess so, because like it's toxic to your ears, it's clearly not metabolized. So. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Um, uh, you said we're toxic and, and toxic to the ears and that, that's not why we're metabolized. We're in the kidneys, uh, it, it, it's filtered or the liver is metabolized, therefore you cause damage. But because of the sensitivity of, of that nerve is that what happens, the medication mm -hmm. affects that. You can have the ringing of the ears and you can have, have the, the uh, uh, deafness. Generally when deafness occurs, in some cases it's transit, in some cases it's permanent. Because of the damage of the nerve itself. Did that answer? Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Aminoglycoside, <coughs> another kind of antibiotic with a human bacterial protein synthesis. It's very good against E. coli. Drugs that are that are aminoglycosides or uh, as you see, there's streptomycin, gentamicin. In a lot of cases, you will have uh, medications like uh, vancomycin, which are used, and it's used in conjunction with gentamicin in order to have a more effective uh, fight against the bacteria. And we're talking generally talking about severe, severe bacteria uh, that's going on within a person. Of course, it's a <clears throat> we haven't gotten that far. So the E. coli one, you could use the lighter one if you were in the beginning stages of E. coli? Mm -hmm. An antibiotic that's not so strong? And then no. this one would be used? No. This antibiotic is, is targeted for that uh, bacteria. E. coli is normally within, within your body. It helps you to digest. However, E. coli is a an opportunist. It is kept in rain so that, that you can only have so many babies and that's done. Okay? Uh, but what happened is that when, when it's let loose and it proliferates, it gets out of hand. The, uh, this medication is used in order. Am I right one? I went back and forward, didn't I? Okay. The aminoglycosides are specific for E. coli, which is a gram negative. Bacteria. 
okay? So when we look at antibiotics, we look at those things which are specific for a particular bacteria, not based on strength. Okay, so you may have one that's very strong, like vancomycin, but that's used for severe infections. Well, this one can be, is used for specific, specifically for gram-negative bacteria. So narrow spectrum? Pardon? Narrow spectrum? It would be considered a narrow spectrum, yes. Because mm -hmm. it fights against gram-negative pretty exclusively. To Tobramycin is also known as Tobrex, right? Correct. Is that the kind of, like on the NCLEX, would they ask, would they give you both of those as well? On NCLEX, what they do is they, they will give you the medication and then they give, give you the, the, the side. They may not give you Tobrex on there. They'll, they'll give you the medication and its generic form, period. The reason I was asking is that cephalosporin, it says that's also used to kill E. coli? Correct. So that's what I was saying, like on the test, how would you know which one obviously has one one be on Based on the question. Based on the question. I won't ask you which antibiotic would you use for E. coli. I won't do that. I will give you a, a medication name and then, then say what is the action and what is the use. Okay. That's considered a trick question. A man of like a size is deal. Side of side effects, adverse reaction, as you see up there. Uh, penicillin tends to decrease the effectiveness of the amino glycosides. Uh, we talked about this before in another slide where penicillin can increase warfarin effects. Question? Nursing intervention, as you see up there, pretty much uh, it is the norm from each antibiotic to the other so far. Mm -hmm. Going along with the uses of for these particular uh, issues, it is a broad spectrum, bacterial cytal, which is a gram negative, gram positive, and it affects. Uh, these different bacteria and in these areas. And then I'll give medication that come under that. And then the side effects pretty normal from up with your uh, heavier dose antibiotics which still we're seeing still. The rash, uh, you'll still see the abdominal upset, the GI upset, and so forth. But we had things like tinnitus and full sensitivity that we're seeing in the, the more sophisticated antibiotics. Hematuria being blood in the urine and crystal urea means that it forms crystals within the, large, within the, the urine, uh, generally within the kidney, part of the pain. And drug interactions, as you can see, a lot of pass is given. And then with this medication, uh, like some of the other ones, is that a large amount of, of water needs to be taken per day. And this is taken to prevent crystal urea. Question. Do we need to know the 
You do. Pardon? Need to know what bacteria covers? Uh, in general. Yes. Like gram negative or actual bacterial names? Or gram negative or actual bacterial names? No, gram negative is kind of bacteria. These are gram negative. We need to know those. Cool. Why is he giving you a picture? Do you need to know what the bacteria begins each of those bacteria? Well, we need to, to know, uh, <laughs> to understand it. Well, I guess so, yes. We need to know that. In fact, that. Yeah. That's a lot of bacteria. A lot of information. Yes, it is. A lot of information. <laughs> How could you see on your phone that you can't see on your paper? I don't know. Oh, okay. It's like you're taking them off. <laughs> Uh, one that is used more often that if you see it there is your combination, which is Bactrim. That's a very common uh, urinary tract infection medication. Generally against E. coli, which causes most urinary tract infections. Okay, you decide that. Is, is Bactrim similar to the one above? Yes, it's very similar. So you're allergic to that, you can't see where you are. You're good. Oh, okay. But that's, that's the, the one that, that, that's the most used. And uh, whether the physician has a contract with the pharmacy or whatever, we don't know. But that's, that's the one that's used most often. I'm allergic to that. Can I find models that I am? <laughs> no, I don't have one. I'm kind of like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> so fun of my side effect and nurse interventions, we're still looking at pretty much the same stuff that we had seen before. Interventions, we add CBC because of the blood dysgrasia. Avoid during third trimester. can cause damage to the, the unborn. Yes, ma'am. Um, at that, that point, with any antibody for an adverse reaction, anaphylaxis is given. Good question. Any questions? What was the the question? question was, under side effects and adverse reactions, how come anaphylactic shock was not listed? And my answer was that, that it uh, is a given with any antibiotic, anaphylactic shock is an adverse reaction. Okay. And, and that's something that, that would, would be covered within the next specific course itself or when that treatment has been given. Uh, in some cases, test dose and on. It, it, it is just given, and then you watch for that first 15 minutes to see, or in an IV within that first five minutes to see if they're going to have a reaction. If they do, you cut that off and you put the normal saline on, and then you have your empty pen in handy. And the information is there for you to so nothing more to say on it. What was blood dysgrasia? Okay, I thought you heard it over here. Blood dysgrasia is that the medication.